Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury CC3 bringing you some replay casts. Both of them this today are going to be replay casts of Vicarin vs. Nail, two of our most prominent players in the moment. And both of them are going to be on a fairly new map called Mantanior Transfer. This map is one that's just come out quite recently, and not a lot of people have played it much, but it is. Well, I've played it a fair amount, and it is an interesting map to see played. It's laid out, as you can see actually it's on the image right here. This is just center of the map, I'll show it in more detail once the game starts. And it's sort of a compromise between the newer style of map making that's coming up, the more Command Conquer style, and the older style of map making that I had been working on earlier. So anyway, the map is set up, we have, here we have Vicarin in the southwest position and Nail in the northeast position. So the map is set up with, each base has 6LC and 4QP crates set up in small little boxes. And there's small expansions in the center, which have 3LC, 3QP each. The natural expansion is set up a bit differently from a lot of maps, set up more like Meryl Vinjins maps, where there's LC and QP crates right next to each other, in such that you can put RPs next to each QP and LC crate, and allow, that allows you to very quickly swap between the two resources. Same thing with the expansions on the corners, although they have much more resources to use, they are still the same style of expansion. And the map itself is very hilly, it's very... not a lot of flat ground to build on, though there is a fair amount of flat ground to build on. It's a lot less flat than most of the more recent maps that have been made. Anyway, Vikarin is starting out, he's getting his Faro set up, he is going for economy as usual. And Nail is also going heavily for economy. He has gotten 7 LCRP so far, he's going to be getting an 8 very soon, as soon as he can. And also Nail's going CISO and Vikarin is going Grekim. This isn't at all unusual, but this is what they are playing. Just to point out. So Vikarin is going for Octos, getting Octos on all of his RPs. Sorry, on all of his boxes, getting his RPs set up initial 7 RPs. While his Arctic actually goes all the way to his natural expansion rather than going just in front of his main. So it won't be very useful as a tank, but useful as a scout. And he actually is sending. Oh, he's sending forward his Faro and his Seppi to. Looks like his natural already. And yes, we follow the order line. They are going to the natural. So he is setting up very quickly in his natural, not focusing on his main. Not sure if that means he's not going to be defending his main at all, or just not going to focus on it. Nail in their hands about a half a minute ahead of him, getting his natural set up quite quickly. And his main has been set up for LC, getting another importer as well. He has no QP boxes in his main taken. He has one in the natural taken, actually two in the natural taken now. And his special up is halfway across the map, at a two minute mark, to Vicarin's base. We'll be seeing that Vicarin has nothing in his main base, apart from the RPs. Vigrin does have his natural just about built up now. He has Octus coming in to make more RPs in his natural. And now setting up his Seppi and Faro to continue building up in his natural. So he's going to be basically using his natural as his main base, getting a couple more Octos. So very rapidly getting his economy in his base. And now Nail is well aware of what Vigrin is up to. Blue time where you can see what the damage has been done. So Nail well aware of what Vigrin is up to. Oh, I see. Vikram's actually going random, apparently, according to the chat. So that is... That is the start of the game. So both players now know what each other is, and both players have gone for the naturals quite quickly, and not really focused on their main very much, which is interesting, because there's a lot of resources in the main, and it's not that hard to defend, but I guess they figure it'd be easier to defend the natural, or at least easier to set up in the natural. It'd be interesting to see how that pans out. Both players, like I said, have gone for the strategy, so... It's... It'll be interesting to see what happens. The, there really isn't any variance between the two of them. I'm a bit surprised they're both going for this. I, I'm curious how often they played on this map, because they are going for nearly identical openers. Apart from where, obviously, race makes a difference. And that is going to be fascinating to see what will happen. So, Sevi being built up at the 250 mark for Vikarin. And interestingly, Vikarin is not fast forwarding. This one he's going at normal speed. No, he's fast forwarding now. Okay, it's a little bit abnormal for players not to fast forward. I'm a bit surprised he isn't. Nail is fast forwarding through this. He does have special ops coming into the main, so he doesn't know that the main... I'm sure he knows by now the main is not particularly well occupied. He has a marine going over to the corner expansion to build some RPs up there. So Nail really trying to push the typical see so fast expand mentality. See how far he can push it, see what he can do with it, because Vikram does this all the time. And Vikram, as Grekum, is not expanding a huge amount, though he did expand fairly quickly early on. He hasn't expanded much since then. He appears to be focusing a bit more on tech. He has his reef up. He will be getting advanced structures pretty soon, most likely. And after that, he will be... After that, he will be in 
pretty good position once he has air units and such. Grecum air units, of course, quite powerful. Probably will be getting advanced structures and then low legal class because that's typically what Grecum has been doing. They get advanced structures, get us by, or get Farpod and Octopod, and then. Oh, okay, apparently this replay is corrupted. Hmm. Good to know. I. I'm not sure. Uh, let me check if this is the one. Oh. Okay, apparently both three plays from this are corrupted, and that really sucks because I don't. I, I honestly don't have any other replays to cast. Like, no one's been posting the replays to game replays. It's really kind of annoying. I don't, I don't have anything else to cast. Anyway, the. Well, anyway, Vikran is sending a couple of. Or three Faros and a Sepi over to the north expansion. Probably try to intercept a bit. RPs have been built there by Nail, and they are going to be. Well, they're going to be attacked pretty quickly by the Faros and Sepi. And Nail is seeing his special ops coming in, in the first place. He doesn't have a lot built up yet. He has a mech, he has, he has some importers and macrofab coming up. He has a couple factories up, and he has this expansion starting up to the 419 mark. Well, Vikran has... Well, he's basically intercepted the entire expansion attempt from Nail on the north base, so Nail will probably end up trying to counter that as best he can. So, this is going to be a rather... Well... Rather difficult game for Nail at the moment. Vikran does have tech advantage. He does have resource advantage, though. Nail definitely has that. But Nail is going to be hard-pressed to push it towards the units right now. Farpod has been built, and... Tornads are being built for Nail. So Nail will be able to detect the Farpod and stop it, should Vikran use it a lot. I don't see Vikran using it a great deal, because Vikran probably will end up using it just to build Sepi Legos. Most players do, but I could be wrong. He could actually end up going for something trickier than that. He is getting a couple Sepi pods, which leads me to believe he is probably focused a bit more on pod class air at the moment. He does have a reef coming in as well towards this expansion, so he's definitely looking to take it. He has the reef, of course, being a healing and tech structure, so he can use that to better secure a base. So he only has far pods at the moment, because Sepi was used to build this reef, so he doesn't have anything to actually build a duo with, or any triad. He does have, like I said, he has enough to take down the RPs that are there, and Nail coming back a bit before that point, he does not have anything... Well, he jumped away towards the president at the 714 mark, but he doesn't have anything at that time to really fend it off. DTHCs are not particularly useful against three Faros. One ATHC will not beat three Faros, no matter what happens. The Faros can detect the cloaked ATHC, and of course, they. I mean, one ATHC is a problem, but three or four ATHCs is not. So, Comm Center is being built for Nail. He's run away as Marine, trying to get his Comm Center in just position to have a better sight of everything going on so he knows what's being built. ATHC is coming in, trying to intercept. The far on The other Faros have not are flanking now. This is the when the far, first two Faros, sorry, second two Faros come into flank, and they are going to be able to destroy everything here. So the Marine has been destroyed once again. Nail is not able to save that Marine from the looks of it. Vikran has managed to secure this base, and the south base he is trying to secure. He does have RP set up in the south base. He has a Faro and Sepi. Special Ops is here to try to take out the base. Looks like we'll be able to take out the Sebi before the Sebi actually manages to get out of it, but the Faro will be able to kill it. The Faro, of course, on its own cannot build units without turning into an Arcticus first, but the Sebi is still... So the Sebi's still necessary at this point, but another Sebi could be easily built and sent over. So Vikran is still in a pretty good spot. His Faro Pod Sebi Pod coming in are destroying the North Base quite effectively, and this is, this is why the North Base isn't particularly major, because it is a heavily... And North and South Base, I should say, because they are quite contentious. It is very difficult to hold that base. The natural and main, of course, are fairly easy to hold. They should be. But these bases, central bases, are going to be very hard to hold, as we can see right now. So Nail, right now, becoming a bit despondent about his chances of winning. He has a Tornado set up, though. He could use... I'm sure he's building some frigates. He is building frigates. He does have a frigate out already. Actually, a couple of those with the Tornado could help turn the tide around here. The Sepipod coming in to take care of that frigate... Oh, sorry, take care of the Tornado, and the frigate coming in to help it out. Tornado has been destroyed. Sippy Pod, and this is very near the unplayable pass, so everything that happens here is pretty much guaranteed to be final. And the Sippy Pod is going to be going down, though. Three frigates, or two frigates coming in, and a Far Pod coming into the main base. Natural of Nail, taking care of the RPs, closing them up, making sure they can't harvest at all. 
Vikran very near the unplayable past. He has no orders left. Of, he has no CE left for orders. And he's getting chronoporting. Holy, this is new. Okay, Vikran never gets chronoporting. I know this seems unusual because most Grecan players get chronoporting. It's a thing that Grecan players do. Vikran never does this. He never bothers to get gate tech or chronoporting. Or if he does, he uses it for teleportation with Vekir. He doesn't really chronoport much. So, if he's getting Grecan chronoporting, that means he's planning on chronoporting. So, this is going to come very interesting very fast. I'm imagining that these far upon city are going to be chronoported back to take out this expansion, just do a little uppercut on the expansion. Nail's probably none the wiser at the moment. He will figure out soon enough once he actually sees the Chronoport alerts. And Frigate coming in to try to take care of the Faropod and Sepipod. Unfortunately, the Faropod, sorry, unfortunately for Nail, the Faropods are invisible. They are cloaked. A Tornado will be very handy to help to fix the situation. I think a Tornado is going to be being built. It is, no, a mech is being built here. And a Chronoport has occurred. Vigoran has Chronoport back, likely the Faropods. And like I said, the Faropods are cloaked, so there is no way for Nail to stop them before they Chronoport. He would have needed to have gotten a Tornado earlier, and he does not have a Tornado built up. So there is no way he can get that set up. And yes, he, Vikarin is sending back the Faropod and a couple of Faros as well. Looks like he was planning on building an Arcticus there, but I'm not 100% sure. He does have a construction order being set out. No, he's moving his Arcticus there. He's just completely invading Nail's base. And looks like the Northeast base... Sorry, Southeast base. Nail is able to protect that a bit, but really it's hard to tell what Vikarin's planning on doing the Unplayable Past. He didn't... He queued up all his orders while paused, so it's hard to see what's going on. But we'll find out once the green timer comes along. We see that there's already damage being dealt there. I'm reluctant to go back and actually check it out as the Observer, but we will see when it comes along what damage occurred, and I'm sure Vikarin or Nail will be looking back there. Nail, of course, sees red damage on the timeline. He knows something's up. I'm sure he's aware that there is a Chronoport departure. He has not decided to address it yet, and it's nearly off the Unplayable Pass, so it's going to be very difficult for him to address. He would need to get Gate Tech in the first place, because he did not manage to kill that Faropod before it Chronoported. And the reason I bring up the Unplayable Pass is because if he killed the Faropod, once the Chronoport arrival hits the unplayable, sorry, the immutable pass, I should say, he would end up causing a permaclone, which wouldn't be particularly useful. Well, sort of a permaclone. It, it wouldn't die. It wouldn't stop chronoporting. Anyway, this is what happened. Farbod, two Farbods were chronoported back, and they did manage to deal quite a bit of damage. So, Vikran in a great spot right now, having this natural, basically, his within the unplayable pass, and now the immutable pass, this is going to be a thing that will have happened permanently. More Sephipods coming in towards the north... Sorry, towards the southeast base. And they're not going towards the northeast. They're not going towards the main. They're going towards the southeast. Trying to clean this up. There's only one RP here in the first place. So there's not much to clean up. And we're not trying to take care of the reef here, but it won't be able to do much good because it will cease to exist once the green time comes along. All this damage will cease to exist. The natural will have already been destroyed. So Vikarin doing a very good job taking care of this. There is... Oh, there... Yeah, there's a frigate swarm coming in from Nail from the north. This should be chronally consistent... Or causally consistent... That Frigate Swarm was built from the main base, not from the expansion, but the expansion resources may have been necessary. No, never mind. Nail has enough money in the bank. It won't have made a difference. Nail did lose a couple hundred LC and QP from that expansion loss, but he did not lose the Frigates that were here. So he's not going to be ending up losing those Frigates. He will be able to still attack, but he doesn't know he's going for it. Instead, he's going for a defense on his main base, and he's going to try to defend his main base, but it's not going to much of a chance. Frigate being destroyed left and right. There's three frigate, two Frigates left, and three Seppi Pods left, and yeah, it looks like... There is no way out of this. Nail has pretty much lost the game. I'm not sure what he's talking about reflex corruption. and this looks completely valid to me. So, this is... This pretty much appears to be the end of the game. So, Vikran jumping back. He's... Nothing really he needs to change right now. He is getting Lolita class, though. And I'm not sure he's actually going to get set because or not. He's pretty much won the game at this point. And Nail doesn't have much of a chance. He does have... The thing is, Nail does have a lot of money in the bank. He wasn't building enough macro fabs. He had, he had more macro fabs. He wouldn't be able to get more frigates and use them or possibly heavy tanks, although heavy tanks are a lot, take a little bit longer to get up to. But the fact is, there's a lot of heavy pods, so ground-based anti-air probably would have been a bit more effective than air-based anti-air. Regardless, he is losing the macro fab that he does have. He did lose that factory. He does have another armory and factory even built in the, south, in the northwest base, though. Southeast base being completely Vicarins right now. He has a duo there and some RPs. And his main base, he had, well, his natural, which is reappropriated main base, his main, actual main base has been completely unused. Nail uses main base a lot more than Vikran did, which is probably to his benefit because it does mean he has a way of surviving even though he's under heavy attack. His northwest base is a way out of this, but he did have the main base is costing Vikran a lot of time when it comes to trying to destroy it. So this is going to be quite there, and it looks like... Yeah, so Nail has confirmed that the first one probably isn't corrupted. There's This is how it went down in the first place. And this is also a chronoported back to heavy, by the way. So both 
So Vicarin making very prolific use of his Corona Porting. And he has he has one. Nail has surrendered. Well done to Vicarin. That was a really interesting game to watch. I was quite surprised how that worked out. So that was quite neat. I did not expect Vicarin to use Corona Porting at all. That's honestly never happened. But that's pretty cool. So not saying on Vicarin. So I'm just gonna shut down the stream for a second so that it becomes a separate video. And then I'll be back in a couple minutes. And we'll see if the second replay is corrupted. If it is, well, then it won't go into YouTube. But we'll see what happens anyway. So we'll be back in a couple minutes.